right, guys, quiz tomorrow. This is being called quiz eight. Quiz seven, remember, it was just a little one unit, one section, one that we did no calculator with the graphing. Okay, so two, three is back on this. Okay, two, three is remainder and factor theorem. So you have to do long division. Uh, do you have this one? Is it handwritten on your paper or is it not at all? Okay, I, I spent time this weekend making a nice smart here. So, all right, um, but I don't have a cursor. Now I do. Okay, 4x cubed plus 3x squared minus 5x plus 3. Anybody want to come up to the board and do it? Okay, someone tell me what goes first. Four. four and an x because I need x squared to become exactly 4x cubed. And then I have to distribute the 4x through everything. So I get a plus 8x squared minus 20x. I don't know. I've started like subtracting each one instead of changing the signs. I don't know what helps you guys. Like this one is subtract zero. This one we change and becomes negative 5x squared. This one becomes plus 15x. Everybody good? Now what? It's got to become exactly negative 5x squared, so we need what? All right, negative 5x squared minus 10x plus 25. Okay, as we change the signs and add... I'm getting 25x minus 22. Anybody? Yes? No? That's what you got? Okay. <clears throat> it says we have to rewrite. This is the answer plus what? Beautiful. All right. Everybody's going to get that one right this time? If if you were so inclined, because you didn't want to have to retake that, how could you check that? You could take 4x minus 5 and multiply it by what? Okay, so you would multiply these two, and then we do what with the remainder? Add, and you don't need the divisor, you just add that. Okay, that's how you would check it. Foil this back together, combine like terms, and you should get back to the top. All right? Anybody so desires? Because it's really hard when it has an ugly remainder to know if you did it right. Okay. This one's just synthetic division. What are we going to have to be careful of? Two things. Placeholder. There can be a placeholder with long division as well. What's the other thing that some people did wrong last time? Yeah, a few people put five. So we got to remember it's the zero, and then two, four, zero, negative 53. And people last time just left it. They didn't change it to a polynomial. And I didn't count it wrong, and I'm probably doing something wrong here, so... Is that what you got? Okay. Um, the issue is people just, last time it asked, is this the factor? Okay. This time it says, literally, you have to give me the depressed polynomial and write the remainder as a fraction. Some of you didn't. Last time you just said yes or no. You didn't rewrite it. How would you write this? Two oh three over what? x plus 5. Yep, you could do either plus a negative or minus. Are we good? Everybody's okay? <clears throat> a polynomial with three coefficients, real coefficients, where did I get three? In factored form with zeros at, we just did this for a warm-up yesterday. Okay, y equals Uh, 
I was negative seven. I has to be one. And I wasn't cruel and put like two plus three I and two minus three I or anything disgusting. It's nice. But what do you have to do to finish? Okay, what does that become? It's x squared plus 7ix minus 7ix minus 49i squared, which becomes plus 49. And the whole reason you should know it becomes plus, because if it was minus, it would factor, right? Plus 7 and minus 7, and it didn't factor. That's why there was imaginary answers. All right, we good? Yay, everybody's getting a five on that one. Attempt number two for zeros of a polynomial. Okay. This went particularly awry last time because people didn't do the list all possible very well. And then they didn't remember to sometimes have the leading coefficient or to do successive division. Do you have a better example? Here we go. All right, here's a question. Do you have this question? Oh, it's on worksheet 8A. Can you pull out 8A? My bad. I feel like there's another worksheet you should have out. Uh, 17, I think. Yes, 17A and B. So take out 17 and 8. I should go back here and change that to say that. But All right, guys. It says C8A. Ready to find 8A? Okay, so this is question number 2. Maybe. What are all these? Oh, I see. Okay, I gotcha. So I kind of did this one already, but how do you list all the factors for the list all the possible zeros, rational zeros? Yeah, 33 over leading coefficient are one. So this list would include Is that it? Okay. Yep. So then I graphed it in the calculator and at one it was at negative twelve. I did a zero here and it was disgusting. I did find a zero here and it was disgusting. But I did try negative three and it worked. Okay. So then I did synthetic division and it came out zero. And then I was left with this and it didn't factor. So I had to do quadratic formula to find the other two. Not saying that's on the quiz, but that's what you would have to do. I can't read that, so let's do this real fast. Oh, apparently I can't erase that. Um, negative 7 plus or minus the square root of what's uh, b squared minus 4ac. 44 and 49, somebody? 90? 49 and 44, 93? All over 2a. Okay. So those are the three zeros, negative three and those two. This particular direction just said find the rational zero, so the only one would have been negative three. These are irrational. So you really didn't have to do that, but I don't think I signed eight anyway, right? So it's more practice tonight. I think I have another one, though. This is number six off that worksheet. Okay. Um, this time, what are the possible rational zeros? Plus or minus 1 over plus or minus the leading, is everybody with me where I'm looking at number 6 here? Leading coefficient is 4, so I have, okay, plus or minus 1 over 1, 1 over 2, and 1 over 4. Okay, so then I graphed it. And I think I was lucky enough to find all three of them from the graph. But maybe we shouldn't do it that way. So we can, oh, one's a negative. All right. So pick one that I found down here from the graph. Okay. 
If we do negative 1, we'd have 4, 4, negative 1, and negative 1. Say, what do I get? 4, negative 4, 0, 0, negative 1, and 0. Okay? So, so far, if I had to write it as a factor, I'd have x plus 1. What's left right here? Four x squared minus one. Okay. Okay. Does that factor further? That was on the last quiz, and no one factored it. Remember? Is, are those not both perfect squares? So how does that factor? Okay. What? This is fine, but what if you had found all three zeros on the calculator, not done synthetic division? So how would you have maybe written that zero? Negative one half, x plus one half, negative one, x plus one, one half, x minus one half or 0.5. I don't know why I wrote one at fraction. This, is this right? Almost. You have to go back and put the 4 out here because remember it has to multiply back to this. So it would have been fine if you put the 4 out there or do you see why we didn't need the 4 when we factored it this way? We had 2x and 2x, okay? All right, so that was a good question to we talk about that. Oh, here's another one for fun. All right, this is number four. I'm apparently going to kill this concept. What are all the factors of nine over five? So we'd have one, three, nine over one, and then one fifth, three fifths, nine fifths. That's a pretty nice size. I would put the list that long on the quiz. Might have even put one that's longer. I don't remember. Okay. <clears throat> then the only one I found that was nice, that I'm going to admit to finding this nice, I don't know about the other two, are 0. 0.6, which is 3 fifths. So we get 5, negative 3, negative 15, and 9. It's not that bad because what's 5 times 3 fifths? Three, zero, right? Negative fifteen times three fifths. Negative nine. Yep. Okay. So now what do I have? This is like on the quiz. Remember, this is how it is on the quiz because it has some irrationals. I think so. We get. So where are all the zeros? Three fifths is one, but what else? Not zero. Doesn't go through zero, zero. X squared equals three, so X equals plus or minus the square root of three. And if it said factored, you'd write what? Three fifths x minus square root of three, x plus square root of three, and <coughs> gotta have the five out front, or you can write this as five x minus three. But that's very much like the one on the quiz. I'm not saying it's a point six, but there's okay. So that number four right there was a good example for the quiz. Any questions? You have to leave it. Oh, you mean foil this back together? You you could foil those two together and I wouldn't count it. Actually, I don't know what it says. It probably says linear factors, but I don't really care. But no, don't don't worry about it. Leave it square roots like that. It's fine. We good? All right. Moving on to graphing.
This is off worksheet 17, maybe. Can someone check on 17B? Is this number eight? Okay. Did we already do number eight? Okay. So what can we do to the top here? X minus three and X plus one. Does that work? Okay. And on the denominator? Take out an X. And what do we see? There's a hole at three, so three comma something. If we divide that out and put three back in, we get four thirds. So three and a little above one, there's a hole. What else? There is a vertical asymptote at x equals, because of the denominator having an x, x equals 0, which is the y-axis. What else? There is an end behavior asymptote or a horizontal asymptote in this case because it's leading weight over leading, leading weight. Equal weight over equal weight, it is leading coefficient over leading coefficient, so it's y equals 1. Um, what about zeros? Andrew said it. I thought you did. What makes the top zero, guys? So negative 1, 0. Is there a y-intercept? If we plug a 0 in, we get negative 3 over 0, which is undefined. There's also an asymptote there, so it can't cross. Okay. Anyone want to guess what this looks like? I'm thinking it's just doing this and this. Did anybody graph it? When you graph, remember, always type the original one in. X cubed. No, it was only X squared. I lied. Minus 2X minus 3 divided by X squared minus 3X. I think we're good, aren't we? Now, depending on your window, it's going to look like it stops. Everybody understands that it doesn't stop? Okay. Um, can we do 10 then, real quick? It's not very different, is it? It factors x plus 3x minus 1 on the top. But down here, we can take out, what do you want to take out? A negative x, and then there's an x. Oh, interesting. There's not a hole, right? So this is a clear different graph. Because even if we took out an x, it wouldn't be the same. Okay, so I'm wrong. It's not the same. What can you tell me? Please state those as equations. Thank you. Um, is there a horizontal asymptote? The end behavior equation is a horizontal asymptote, right? At what? It's equal weight again, so we get y equals negative 1. What does this mean that we have two vertical? There's going to be three pieces to the graph yes very good zeros and y intercept if you put it back in you get negative three over zero there's an asymptote there so there isn't one okay 
negative 3 and positive 1. Now, this is the many years of experience doing this. I'm thinking there's going to be a branch here. I'm thinking there's going to be a squiggle in here, but which way is the squiggle going to go maybe? Can it be both? Why do I know it's not doing that right there? Do you remember what would make it do a volcano? It would have to be a squared around that. Yep, so that one is wrong. I'm thinking it's going to come up like this in here, and I could be wrong. We should graph it and see. And then I'm guessing it's going to be down here. All right. <clears throat> I'll do it on here. Tell me what it is again. X squared plus 2X minus 3 over, oh, forgot, divide. Oh, forgot an X. Plus 3X? How'd I do? Okay. Everybody good? If you were doing this on the quiz, guys, I would really like you to try to find like a nice ordered pair or any, it doesn't have to even be nice, but a fairly accurate ordered pair on the branches like, eh, where are you? What'd I do again, guys? Okay. We had this problem yesterday. What do I need to do? I go down here, and then I go back to this, though I need this. Okay. What I'm talking about, guys, is if I do trace, like, out to five, there I can put something fairly accurate on there so I know where that piece is going. It should be about five, negative three. I was even halfway accurate on that. Okay. But do you see what I'm talking about? Find a couple nice order pairs. All right. What about this question? Write a rational function with a vertical asymptote at 7, horizontal asymptote y equals 0. Rational function means what? Okay. There's x's top and bottom. Would that work? Does that have a vertical asymptote at 7? And it has an end behavior that's bottom heavy, so it's going to approach y equals 0? Okay. Yes. Yes, you can. Great question. Reminder, guys, I'm not here tomorrow. The quiz, the sub is supposed to know to pass the quizzes out A, B, A, B, A, B, and I told it, the whoever it is that you can use the yellow reference sheet, I did tell him you should make sure that you, there's no writing on it, okay, other than your name. If you wrote on it by mistake, there I have extras up here, okay? Everybody good? Um, I think this is actually an error analysis on the quiz tomorrow. Like, Bobby wrote one, and this is what he wrote. Is he right or is he wrong? Now, I was going to Rather than have you explain everything that he did wrong or right, or, I said, if if it's wrong, just fix it. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. I didn't want to think about all the ways you could describe if he was wrong or not. And he's not necessarily wrong, but okay. Because there's multiple right answers too, so. Okay, guys, what about this? Moving on. Do we good with this stuff? Do we need to review this quick? It's for the video, so review quick. What do we do here? Take out a 6. Bottom factors. Okay. What do we got to do to this guy, though? It says divide, so we're going to flip it. So can I just factor the bottom is now the top? And the top is now the bottom. OK. 
okay? And what divides out? I didn't even use the word cancel. Oh, wrong one. Just kidding. Okay, yes. So what's left is a 6 and an x minus 7 over an x plus 1, x plus 3, and just leave it. Yeah, don't boil it back together or anything. All right, what about this guy? 3 over x plus 5 and 4x over x minus 2. So this one has to multiply by x minus 2 over x minus 2 so that we can add it to this one, which multiplies by x plus 5 over x plus 5. That's really messy, Hoffbauer. Okay, what do we get on top? 3x minus 6 plus 4x squared plus 20x. And if this perchance on the quiz is a minus, we would remember to distribute it as a negative, yes? Okay. And are we done? Yeah. And hope it doesn't factor? I don't know. This one looks like it might. 4x squared. Oh. Plus 23x minus 6. I bet it does factor, but is x plus 5 or x minus 2 going to be one of the factors? Four x and six x and one plus and minus. So nothing would divide, right? So you could leave it either of those answers I would be fine with. It's good to factor in case it reduces, but it doesn't reduce, so either one of that answer or that answer would be good with me. Are we okay? Then we have the rational equation ones. This is off worksheet 17, side A. Okay, guys. 17A. What can we do to, I don't know, I put number four up here first. What's the common denominator for number four? We factor that it's x and x minus four. So x and x minus four is what they all have to have, right? Now, what I did in the past was I just multiplied through by that. Is that okay with everybody? Remember when we saw things like this earlier this year? We found the common denominator and multiplied through by it to get rid of the denominators, right? We said, let's multiply through by... <gasps> 36, right? And one like that to get rid of all the denominators. Well, we're going to multiply through by the least common denominator here. So this is how I taught it, I think. I wrote down the problem. And then for each one, I'm going to multiply by an x and an x minus 4 an x and an x minus 4, an x and an x minus 4. Uh, so what happens over on the left side? Yes, so we just have, okay, all of this cancels and we just have 1 equals, what happens here? So we have a nice, disgusting, we need to FOIL those together. Can we do that at this step? x squared plus 5x minus 4x minus 20. We'll get to combine in a minute here. And what happens over here? x is cancel again. We have to FOIL and distribute a negative. Yeah. Should we distribute the negative before we FOIL? I don't know. Uh -huh. All right, well, if we FOIL, we'd get x squared minus 4x minus 1x plus 4. That's a minus 1x right there. Ugh, can't move it. Um, and all of that is being subtracted, right? 
This is harder than the quiz, I promise. Good news, though. What happens? X squared's cancel. So I have 1 equals 5 minus 4 plus 4 plus 1. What happens? 6x? Yeah, the 4x and minus 4x. Could have, right? So we get 25 equals 6x, x equals 25, 6. Extraneous or not? What are the two that we can't use? X could not have been 0 or 4, or we would have had to worry about an extraneous solution. <clears throat> Let's do one more. Okay. This factors how? No, not six. Take out an R, and then you'd have six R plus one. U. Okay. But is it that going to be the common denominator? Okay, so I'm going to have 1 over r times 6r plus 1 equals, oh, i got to leave room, just kidding, equals 1 over 6r plus 1 plus, back here there's a 5, and I'm going to take the r out again, r plus 1. All right, each one gets multiplied by. And some of you can do this without all the work. I get it. I'm just trying to make sure everybody is following. What happens on the left? We just get one because this all divides out. What happens on this one right here? We just get one R. And over here, plus 5. So if I subtract 5, I get, okay, is that okay? It doesn't make the denominator 0, right? If we wanted to check it, <laughs> this would be 16 times 6. Somebody, is that 96? Okay, this would be negative 24 plus 1, which would be negative 23. And this would be the same denominator we got over there, which was 92. Okay, somebody do 1 divided by negative 23 plus 5 divided by 92. No one helping me. Okay. It, it does, yeah, the fraction is 1 over 92, which is what we had on this side, right? So it works. I would not do that one with decimals to check it if you were going to check it because it's just going to be messy. All right. Um, I think I have one more of that kind at the end if you want to practice it again. Last thing, though, on the quiz is the fun we've been doing. Okay, answer in interval notation using your little sign charts. So the first one is all factored for us. So what values? This is not got a denominator, right? So all we need to put on our sign chart is the zeros, which are at what? Negative 5 and negative 5 halves or negative 2.5. Left to right? Okay. Then what? Graph it, or I, I could visualize it. It's going to be what? If you fold that back together, it would be a parabola that opens up. So I'm thinking it looks like this. But if I wanted to be lazy, I could put in a 0, because that would be up here, and I'd get 25. Is that greater than 0? It's positive out here. Someone asked me yesterday, 
why do I put so many pluses and minuses and does it mean something? No. I don't know why I do that. You could just put a plus there. It's fine. Okay. Someone, well, yeah, someone was like, well, sometimes you put three and some, I don't know. I'm sorry. It's just random. Didn't mean anything. I didn't mean to mess you up. Okay. In between here and here, if I put like a negative three in, I'd get two. So it's negative two. So it's negative. Okay. And down here, if I put like a negative six in. Okay. So I expect to see a little sign chart though, guys. You don't have to put a bunch of pluses and minuses if you don't want. It's okay. But how are we going to answer where it's greater than zero? It's not or equal to. You're right. Okay. Because, because greater than zero meant positive. Okay. This would be a really nice question for me to put in or equal to, though, because you just use square brackets on those both, right? There's no denominator to worry about. So if I had said or equal to, you would have needed a square bracket here and a square bracket here, and that's it. No worrying about anything with a denominator. Okay, there might be one like this. How in the world are you going to do that? Graph it. Okay, if we graph that, negative 6, negative 5, and negative 1. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do it because I want... to test this and to make sure we show on the video how we tested it. Tell me again, guys, x cubed plus 12 x squared. That's a lovely number, 41 x. Okay, I could look at the graph, but honestly, I'm just gonna go to the table. What's below negative six that I could look at? So it's negative out there. Then between, now because I've turned mine on to 0 0.5, I can check negative 5.5 and it's positive. And between negative 5 and negative 1, it's negative again. And it's positive out here. So, I don't know what I just did. Okay. Now what? Where is it less than or equal to zero? Okay. And on this kind, when it says or equal to, they're just hard brackets unless it's an infinity, right? The only reason the other one is issue, and I didn't put one, a rational one, I just put less than or greater than. Yes, because there's asymptotes. Okay, what's going on here? Together with? We're looking for less than, so we want the negatives and the negatives here, right? Everybody good? Madison, you just did greater than, is that what you did? Okay, you're good though. All right, like I said, on this kind, I did not. I wasn't meaning cruel. I didn't put an or equal to, so just use all parentheses, okay? But we have to make it a single fraction compared to zero. Luckily, it's already compared to zero, but we need to combine these. So this guy needs to multiply by 5 over 5, and this guy needs to multiply by x minus 3 over x minus 3. So I have 25 plus what? Four x minus twelve, which is four x plus thirteen over five and x minus three. 
How many critical values? Is there two or three? Can five ever equal zero? No. So we just need to set the top equal to zero and the bottom equal to zero. The bottom equal to zero gives us a three. The top gives us, okay, negative 13 over four and positive three. I'm going to be lazy, guys. I'm not even going to type it in because what falls in between these? Zero, right? Would be easy to test. If I test a zero back here, I get 13 over negative 15, which is negative. Up here, I could put in a four. I'd have like a big positive number over a positive number, so it's positive. If I tested something down here like negative five, I'd get a negative on the bottom and on the top, which would turn into a positive. You can definitely graph it, but when you put in your calculator, do this and this, and then test your values. It asks where it's less than zero, so we'd say what? Did somebody need me to type it in and show how I tested it? Okay. I don't expect you to test them in your head. Okay. I would make a mistake if I was taking a test and I was stressed. Just type them in and test them. All right. I'll stop the video, but do you want to do one more off 8A? 